G'day, it's Matt from Crank Engineering and in the next video on uh, basic electrical work I just want to talk about wiring and wires or conductors as the electrical guys like to call them and some of the tools that uh, I use and just give you some basics and we'll worry about connecting them to other wires and things later on but I just want to talk about wiring to start with so wiring obviously comes in all sorts of uh, shapes and diameters and grades um, and there's different wires for different purposes obviously so um, the, the the main thing to consider with wiring is the capacity of the wire to carry current let me just zoom in on this a little bit and um, these three different cables here might help us start to understand some of that so here's um, here's a 2.5 millimeter uh, diameter wire, it's 0.64 square millimeters in, in cross section which is across that and Nava say this is good for 5 amps of current um, if we go up to the next one here obviously you can't see through that uh, torn label but um, this is 3 millimeters so the last one was 2 this is 3 and Nava say this is good for 10 amps so a bit bigger in diameter really hard to see in the camera I'm sure so two millimeter, three millimeter, five amps, 10 amps. And then this particular one I bought uh, more recently, this is four millimeter cable, but it's good for 20 amps. So the diameter is even bigger again. So you can see that in cross section. So the current carrying capacity is um, related to the diameter or the cross sectional area of the wire. So there are formulas to work this out, um, the electrical guys use, I think I did it in uni, probably first year uni, which was like 20 years ago, so I can't remember what they are. So I'm just going to work with what the manufacturers tell me this type of uh, cable is good for. So generally, if I'm going to replace a part of a motorcycle harness, I'm going to use the same or bigger wire than what's already there. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want to burn my bike to the ground. So if you remember our discussion on resistance if we can try and force a lot of current through a really small wire then that wire is going to be just like a light globe filament it's going to get hot and um, if it gets hot enough you'll um, definitely melt the insulation and then you'll probably short it out against something else and if you're really unlucky you'll burn your bike to the ground so um, if in doubt go to the next size up so I've got a collection of um, different uh, cable spools um, this stuff's really quite light this is really electronics type wire but this set of two four six eight i think cost 30 bucks from a j car so maybe a little bit light for motorcycle work unless it's just for um you know signal wires like an indicator signal wire or something like that from a switch uh, probably wouldn't use them too much in on motorcycles um, unless it's a really low current um, application and then I've got a bunch of other Nava ones in uh, 3 mil, 2.5, 3, in different sizes. And really I, I buy them in different colours so I can try and match what the harness already used. And that just helps you later on when you're trying to identify what the wiring's for. Um, right, so that's, you know, that's the stuff off the shelf. You know, these cables probably cost, I don't know, 10 bucks for a roll, something similar to that. So after a while you tend to accumulate a few, but generally black is for a negative or a ground and a red is for a power. So I tend to use red and black a lot and the other ones, you know, a little less frequently, only when I'm trying to match colors in a harness. So that's the stuff you buy off the shelf from your auto supply or your electronic supply. Just a couple more specialty ones perhaps. Um, this is a fair bit heavier. Uh, I don't even know what diameter, probably five or six mil diameter. Um, and obviously quite a bit heavier. I can't even remember why I bought this, but it's obviously for a higher, much higher current ca carrying capacity. You could even use these, uh, something similar to this for a battery lead on a bike or a starter lead from the battery to the starter motor, something like that. So I've already uh, fitted um, ring terminals and heat shrunk those on. I can't remember why I did this. I can't remember what application it was for. Might have even been making a test lead of some description. Um, Here's another example of you know improvisation. This um, this uh, set of cables here. I'll talk about these pliers in a minute. 
Um, this was, I, I built this for a special purpose. This is a multimeter extension cable, basically. So I can plug these ends into my multimeter and this end I can use for testing. Now the reason I did this was um, I was doing some work on an earth moving piece of equipment and we we're trying to diagnose an intermittent electrical problem. And we wanted to use some alligator clips or, or probes and probe a connector and then put the multimeter in the cab of the machine. And I needed, you know, the, the leads on the multimeter might have been a meter long. I needed 10 meters of um, cable to get from the connector back to the cab. So I improvised, and this is uh, actually speaker wire. So it's got quite a good cross section, obviously designed for speakers, but it carries electricity anyway. The reason I bought it was because it's um, already connected. So rather than having a pair of 10 meter wires, I've got one 10 meter wire and the probes on the end. So, you know, not necessarily a permanent um, solution, but for a one-off job like that, you know, it might have cost me 10 or 15 bucks to, to make that for that particular job. Um, I want to talk quickly about house wiring. Um, not that I'm an expert in house wiring, but um, this is a, just a test lead I made out of a piece of house wiring. And it might be difficult to see in here, but the strands on house wiring are quite a bit heavier. Um, and this is some sort of power cable I stripped and used for a test cable, but it's also very rigid, you know, it's uh, nowhere near as flexible as some of the lighter automotive wires. I definitely wouldn't use this on a motorcycle, but for a test wire or a test cable, if it's lying around, well, use it. If you just want to put an alligator clip on the either end or whatever, works fine. So, you know, I've got a bit of that lying around just for that purpose, for making test cables. Here's another one I made. Um, out of a, this is, I think, a scrap of uh, house wiring or a, maybe an extension lead or a, an appliance lead, um, which I stripped out and I've put alligator clips on for a test lead. And we'll make one of these in, in one of the next videos. So let's talk quickly about some of the tools that I use that are my favorites, a little bit of scrap wire we can, we can use. Um, just regular side cutters. These are, um, these are Stanleys, but they are bloody made in China, like everything these days. But you know, I paid a bit of money for these, they're really good. So generally these I use for cutting um, cable wires and um, chopping cable ties. So whenever I'm doing a wiring job, generally you're cable tying it to something. So these were just great for chopping up cable ties as well and, um, and cutting wiring. So really it's just a knife edge here and you just, um, that's it, job's done. So the ends are cut off and um, away you go. So that, you know, these, I use these all the time, all the time on wiring jobs. So once you've got your, your cut ends like this, you generally need to connect it to something else, so you need to strip the ends off the wire. So a couple of different tools you can use. Now these are the um, generic, really cheap and nasty crimpers you get in a lot of uh, connector kits you might buy from your auto parts supply store. Um, I don't think much of these as a crimping tool. Um, you know, you can even space a bit of shear bolts off in this section here. I don't think much of them for that. But the wire stripper doesn't work too bad. Um, and you can see here, wire stripper and the size of the cable. I don't really worry about the size too much. I just go, yeah, it's probably that one. And squeeze, and you're really just trying to cut through the insulation. So squeeze, and then I normally turn it 90 degrees. Squeeze again, and then you should be able to just pull that off like that. So that's one way of doing it. Um, if you pick the wrong the uh, the wrong crimp or the wrong stripping hole, you're obviously going to cut the wiring. So if I pick the wrong one here too small, then um, I'm just going to cut the wiring off pretty much or I'm going to break the, the the conductors. So okay, but um, I've got better ones than that. So here's another set that I've had for quite a few years which does a very similar sort of job. Um, again, a bunch of holes here for you to um, slice the insulation and then pull it off. My favourite ones though are these ones from um, RS Components. Um, I don't think these are that expensive, maybe 30 bucks, but these will last a lifetime. And the idea is here you can adjust this jaw to the position you want for the length of the wiring you want to leave exposed. And um, it's also got a wire cutter in it, so I'm going to cut that end off there. Goodbye. And then you just stick these guys in here, right up to the to the jaw, and pull, and away you go. So there's a piece of insulation, and there's the stripped end of the wire. So from a stripping perspective, these are my favourites because they're really fast, um, really accurate, and they're repeatable. Yeah, if I want 10 millimetres 
uh, stripped wire, every time I do this, I'm going to have 10 millimeters. Well, if I push it all the way up to the drawer, I will. See how I missed a little bit there? There you go, now I've got 10 or whatever it is. So these are my favorite stripping tools. Um, I'll talk about these crimping tools in another video and talk about um, connectors. So don't worry about them right now too much. We're just looking at stripping at the moment. So they're my favorite tools um, for cutting and stripping wiring. There's a little bit about um, wiring. If you want to um, have a bit of a play around, here's an old appliance lead from a, um, I don't know, a, a pot plate or something my wife threw out the other day because it was broken. So um, side cutters, cut that guy off, cut that guy off. And now I've got to, um, what we've got in here is uh, three conductors or three wires. And we can strip this out and we can use these for some test leads. So um, how are we going to do that? Well, we've got to, got to basically get rid of this black insulation. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use Stanley knife and um, a couple of ways to do it. You can slice down alongside the wiring here. But if I do that and slip, I'm going to slice my fingers off. So I'm just going to go the other way. If I slice the wire, it's not going to matter. I'll just cut it off. Okay, so there we've just started it off. And now if I grab these wires and pull like that, I can rip off the insulation. You can see how this cable was made. These conductors are all twisted inside the insulation and probably dipped in this stuff or whatever. So there we go. So insulation's in the bin. Now I've got three pieces of wire I could use for some for making some test wires. So I've got the uh, brown and a couple of greens there. Now you can see, maybe you can see, where I sliced the um, insulation off. I have cut that wire. I'm not sure how that focus is working. Let's just try and zoom in. Oh, there you go. So I've sliced that um, wire. So, you know, if, if that happens and you build that into a harness, you're probably going to have trouble because um, that's going to touch a frame or something which is grounded and you're going to have a short circuit. So if I ever see that on my wiring, generally I'll just go and cut all that off. So really this green one needs to be a bit shorter and I'll just cut them all the same for the hell of it. All right, so now we've got three pieces of wire we can use for making test leads and we'll do that in another video. I'll head down to the head down to J-Car and buy some uh, alligator clips and we'll solder up some some test leads which you can use for doing test work on your bike so um yeah there you go hope that was useful got any questions or comments please uh, put them in the video or look us up on facebook and thanks for watching cheers